Good day to you, sir, and thanks so much for uh, availing your time. Uh, you accuse some members of the interim board of attempting to hold the organisation hostage. Why do you say that? Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to engage with ENCA viewers. I think I'd before I even get to that question, I just want to start with the, <clears throat> the basic fact that I think it's quite sad that the board has resulted to playing out its affairs in public. I think uh, we've got a responsibility to center the game of cricket, and I've been specific about this even when I was at the Players Association. But I think the reason I say um, the challenges we are facing at the moment, um, some of the members seem to be holding the organization hostage, is that the board is not working in sync, and we're not working in collaboration with each other. And that's just a fact. You know, so I think we need to guard against that, and the board has no jurisdiction to be removing me. And despite that attempt, which is something I'll be challenging in due, in due course. Now, with that said, what are the grounds uh, that you have decided to dispute your removal from the interim board? Well, I think the, the basic fact of it, without getting into it, is that the board didn't appoint me on a basic principle. So we, and I don't think the colleagues have a right to be re removing me from the board. And I think they don't have a case. I think... What's actually transpired here is people are trying to remove me from asking legitimate questions, very tough questions about how we're operating as a board. And I think I've said this in the past, that if we are to get cricket right in South Africa, we have to be procedural about what we do. We have to follow law and order. And these are some of the tough questions I'm asking that we should be executing in that manner. And I understand that our mandate is uh, limited. We've got three months to do our work, but that does not give us carte blanche to actually cut corners. And I think we have to be very, we, we, we have to respect um, the organization's processes and procedure. And I think we've got a responsibility to build institutional confidence. If you look at the organization at the moment, it's quite naked, so to speak. You know, there's no uh, company secretary. There's no chief commercial officer. Uh, the current acting CEO is wearing multiple hats. And it can only be strenuous on an individual. And it does not build confidence inside the organization. So I think as board members, our affairs should not be playing out in public and they should actually be contained within the boardroom. And we should be focusing on the players and they should be the ones taking the limelight. And it's as simple as that. Now, there's obviously a lot of things that uh, are, have been said and that is currently underway. Uh, what do you make of a number of the directors that did not participate in the vote for various reasons? Uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, I, I think that just tells you where the situation rests. And I think we should allow a formal process to ventilate this entire pro process that was followed. And then we'll, and I'll take the outcome of any process, you know. But I think we should not be uh, scared to subject ourselves to a process that is independently adjudicated and adjudicated by someone who is qualified. So I'm not really, um, I, I'm not phased. If I'm on the wrong side of the law, I'll take that. But I think the colleagues should not hide behind. Um, majority issues of the law. Now, quick, just quickly, last week the board released their statement regarding your so-called removal. Amongst the accusations made were around your unhappiness over issues uh, surrounding Welsh Gwaza's charge sheet, that you questioned the handling of the ICC chairpersonship situation, and that you leaked information to the media. How do you respond to those claims? Um, without actually getting into, into that, I think those are frivolous and those are baseless. There's no content, there's no evidence to even sustain any of that. So that's where I'll leave that for now. I think it's just an attempt to discredit me as a, as a person. And um, one of these things, I don't take them personally because, like I said, if they are so confident in what they're doing, they can release all the minutes, they can release all the recordings and allow an independent process to actually ventilate this. Uh, the next thing that I just want to touch on is uh, the, uh, are, are you happy with the reasons given for the exclusion of uh, Tolani Vonya from the board? Beg your pardon, sorry, I can't hear that. Are you uh, satisfied or happy with the reasons given for the exclusion of uh, Tolani Vonya from the board? Uh, frivolous at best. There's, there's nothing there. You, there's, there's, no, there's no merit, and I think I'll, 
I would rather, uh, th and this is my subjective view on that, and I'm happy for Paulani to actually speak for himself, you know, because we've been asking questions and we've been actually encouraging the colleagues to follow process and procedure. And that's been the nub of the issue here. There's nothing more to it, you know, and because we're standing on, those, on that principle, uh, we've been labeled all kinds of things, which, I, which is not correct. I appreciate the fact that you earlier already indicated that uh, these matters should not play out within the media. Uh, but uh, just answer me this. The board was appointed by the sports minister. At this very sensitive juncture, should the minister intervene uh, during this impasse? Yes. The, the, I, I think what, what people need to understand, the minister has done his part here in, in terms of engaging in a very intensive consultative process with all stakeholders. SACA was a stakeholder. The Members' Council was another key stakeholder, uh, amongst others, right? There was an, an intensive process, and the board was regularized by the Members' Council, right? And that's just that, you know? And I think we shouldn't be running to the ministry. There should be an enough, enough maturity amongst the leaders and the board to actually resolve the matters internally. And we should, and like I said earlier, it, it's actually... It's a bit sad that we are not focused on the cricket at play. We've got another major tour coming up in Sri Lanka, and we have to make sure that South Africa puts its best foot forward as a place where cricket can be played in a COVID-friendly environment. And that should be the focus, all the issues, they should be contained within the boardroom, and they should stay there. Long. We can disagree vigorously if needs be, but we must actually, that's where that belongs. We should not be in the limelight. Now, clearly, there are plenty of legal ramifications at play at the moment. Uh, what would you say is the way forward? And are there now two camps working within the interim board, and we're not even touching on uh, the uh, performance of the players in this upcoming test series that you've just touched on? The uh, way forward, in your opinion, would be what? The, the, the way forward is for people to find the maturity, the maturity to engage um, and to engage the issues. You know, it's not about playing the man you got. You, you, there's no use actually having a go at me for asking the questions. You should engage the questions I'm putting forward and you should actually ventilate those and we, everybody should be satisfied that we are actually engaging in a fair process and that we are actually safeguarding Cricket South Africa, the organization. It's not about my own personal interest. It's about what is it that is good for cricket in South Africa and that should be debated vigorously. And I think it requires mature minds. It requires people that can actually rise up above their own personal uh, feelings and how they feel about the entire situation. And I've always been ready to engage at any level. But if, if people are willing to take um, extreme routes, then I will have to consider my options as well. Speaking of which, are you at liberty to tell us what you, the individual, are considering at this point? At this point, I'm not at liberty to engage um, on what my actions will be going forward. Thank you so much. That's where we'll leave it. Clearly, there are a number of issues at play in this particular instance. That was former CSA interim board member, Mpile Romela, chatting to us about his dismissal from the interim board. And that's all your sport for the moment.